What's up guys, it's Fernape here, and welcome back to my daily series, where I go over my top 10 favourite Pokemon of each type, without doing duplicates. Today we're going to be going over my top 10 favourite Dragon type Pokemon. Like I said in the last video, Dragon types are my second favourite type, mainly because they are so powerful, and I also like the fact that they're really hard to raise when you get them, and it takes hard work and dedication to raise them into a very powerful Pokemon. So, I'm gonna have a lot of fun making this list. Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it, what some of your favourite Dragon-type Pokemon, if you have any Dragon-type Pokemon in common, and if you have any video suggestions for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get into the video! At number 10, we have Gudra. Now, I haven't used Gudra a lot in playthroughs, mainly because there are better Pokemon to use. But I did use Gudra in one of my playthroughs of X and Y, and it was pretty clutch, I can't lie. Gudra is really, really good. I did like it for a while when Ash used it in the anime. Literally went on a, an impressive winning streak, but then he decided to stay at his birthplace, the wetlands. And then, Gujra kind of became very weak, because it tied with a Slurpuff and lost to a Bisharp. So yeah, probably not the best idea to have left it at the wetlands. Still though, Gujra is a great Pokemon. Shiny isn't amazing, but Gujra isn't really supposed to look tough. It's supposed to uh, look cute, friendly, and has sort of hidden fangs kind of Pokemon, so I guess making it a shiny pink, well, pinkish at least, does kind of make sense. At number 9, we have Kingdra. I have used Kingdra on multiple different games, and I loved using all of them. Kingdra is just such a great Pokemon. Yes, its design is not the greatest in the world, but I do really love how useful it is in a lot of playthroughs. I wasn't a big fan of Kingdra at first, mainly because when I started playing Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, Claire's Kingdra wrecked my entire team. So that kind of made me off about Kingdra. But after a while, I decided, let's try and use one. So I used one, and it was boss. Oh my god, it is so strong. And I actually caught one when I was uh, doing the uh, um, Sword and Shield DLC. And it was really, really strong. I just really love Kingdra. But like I said for quite a while, don't really like pink shinies for badass Pokemon. But still, I do really love Kingdra. And I don't think my love for Kingdra will ever fade. At number 8, we have Haxorus. Now, Haxorus is an amazing Pokemon. I love using it in Pokemon Black and White. However, I am not a big fan of who Haxorus is associated with in the anime. That being Iris. Because she is really annoying in the anime. Like I said, I've used Haxorus a few times in my Black and White playthroughs. And they were all absolutely god. And I tried uh, using a one in a black and white playthrough. It was really strong. And then when I decided to take part in the PWT, I decided uh, to go for every single rank. Basically, I went for the champion's rank, and then I decided to put Haxorus in that team. And it was OP as hell. Plus, I did kind of hack the game so that way I could get the shiny Haxorus you get in that um, far off island. Mainly because I love Haxorus' shiny and I wanted it. But, it was still a great moment. I love Haxorus so much, and I think I always will. At number 7, we have Noivern. 
Now, I do love Neuburn. I just wish that I could have used it earlier in the game in X and Y, because I really wanted to use Neuburn throughout the entirety of the playthrough. But unfortunately, I couldn't do that, because you literally don't get Neuburn until... The, but just before the final gym badge, and the final gym is an ice-type gym, so there's no point in using it. The first time I ever used Neuvern in a playthrough was actually in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and I loved using it. Neuvern was so strong in the entirety of the playthrough. I love the fact that you could get it literally at the start of the game, and I used it, and it was beast. Yes, it did take a while for it to evolve, but before it evolved, it still was pretty strong. But when it went from Neubat to Neuvern, it became a boss. I loved using Neuvern. If I could change one thing about it, it would be its shiny. Oh boy, that shiny is not the one. Like, that sort of, of colour does not work on a Neuvern. Like, if it were me, I would just change it to something other than green. Definitely do not make it pink. That would make it even worse. But just change it, for God's sake. Still though, I love Neuvern, love its power, and I just can't un not love Neuvern. I also really loved it when I first saw it in the black and white anime, where it would bite everything in sight until it got a spell and berry. That was just quite funny. At number 6, we have Flygon. Now, Flygon is a great Pokemon to use in a, quite a lot of different playthroughs. My personal favourite way to use it in a playthrough, Black and White 2. It is so beast in those games. Funny enough, Black and White 2 was actually the first time I ever used Flygon in a playthrough, and it was a monster. Oh my god, it annihilated loads of important characters. I adored using Flygon in every single battle that I used him in. He's so strong, so badass, his design is amazing, and I just wish it was real. Because, no joke, I would happily have a Flygon in real life. I think most people would. But still though, I really, really love Flygon. I just wish it had a better shiny, because its shiny is more or less exactly the same. But still though, I do love Flying Gone. At number 5, we have Dialga. Now, I do love Dialga. Like, if you can't tell, I am a Gen 4 boy. Literally, I don't think anybody could love Gen 4 as much as I do. I did pick Pearl over Diamond, I don't know why, when I currently like Dialga more than Palkia. Doesn't mean that I don't like Palkia, because I do have a soft spot for Palkia, but I like Dialga more. For some reason, I just have more memories with Dialga when I was younger, because I remember that Dialga was actually one of the Pokemon that helped me beat Cynthia. But I just brought in Dialga uh, again, and her Garchomp to whittle down the PP, then kept on switching it out between Pokemon that lowered Garchomp's attack stat, then brought in, in Dialga again, and then just Roar of Time it into Oblivion. And that was quite a fun moment, I can't lie. Dialga is just such a well-designed Pokemon. I loved it in the movies, I loved it in the games, I loved it in the anime, and I just overall love Dialga. And I, to be honest with you, I don't think my love for the Olga is ever going to fade, because I am a massive Gen 4 nerd, and the Olga is the mascot legendary for one of the Gen 4 games. And funny enough, the very first, um, re the first game that I'm going to play of the remakes is actually going to be Brilliant Diamond, hence because I like the Olga more. At number four, we have Dragonite. I love Dragonite. As soon as I saw it in my Heart Gold and Soul Silver playthrough, I wanted one so badly. But I didn't know how to get it. 
when I found out how you can get a Dratini and a Volta into Dragonite. I tried my best to do the Voltorb flip, but I failed like every single time. I never got to use a Dragonite in a playthrough until I played Fire Red and Leaf Green. Then I managed to find a Dratini, I caught it, and I raised it. And it was a beast. I leveled it up up until I got to Dragonite. I believe I actually used rare candies in order to get it to evolve because I was extremely impatient and I ha just had enough rare candies to get it to level 55. Evolved it, and it was a monster. It kicked the crap out of so many important characters, and it even uh, helped me most of the time one-shot all of Blue's Pokemon. So, yeah. Plus, I love Dragon Knight's hidden ability, multi-scale. I think that's, it's all marble scale, something like that, or something like that. Anyway, I love its ability, and it is just so strong. I have used its um, competitive version in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and it was a monster. I just love Dragonite. If I were to change one thing, I would change it shiny, because Pickle Knight is not gonna cut it. At number three, we have Lotios. Now, do you remember when I did my top 10 psychic type Pokemon and I said Lotios was gonna be in another list? Well, this is the list. And as you can see, I like Lotios more than Lotias. The first time I ever saw a Lotios was actually Tobias's Lotios. Shock horror, I liked it from Gen 4 anime. But still, it was just a well-designed Pokemon, and I was absolutely starstruck that it pretty much one-shotted all of Ash's Pokemon. Well, half of his team anyway. Still though, Giga Impact one-shot Sceptile, Luster Purge one-shotted Swellow, but then it t did take a while for it to take down Pikachu, but it's Pikachu, what did you expect? I love Lotio so much and I wanted to use it in a game. Then at one point in one of my Johto remakes, I actually tried to track down Lotios. It was a root I hate roaming legendaries, but it was a roaming legendary, so... I tried every tactic I could in order to whittle down its HP, give it a status condition, just so I could try to catch it, because I did not have a Master Ball. But I did manage to catch it, I used it, and it was a monster. I love Lotios so much. At number two, we have Salamence. I don't know when I started to like Salamence, I mean, I first saw Salamence when I saw the um, Diamond and Pearl anime, because Hunter J had a Salamence as her partner. I thought it was a bit of an evil Pokemon at first, but I kind of grew to like it because I did really like its design and its power. I honestly can't remember the first time I ever used a Salamence in a playthrough, but one of my memories of using a Salamence in a playthrough was actually from Pokemon Sun and Moon. I managed to capture a very rare Bagon. Oh my god, it took so long to find that bloody Bagon. But I managed to capture it, I used it, and it wrecked. An emphasis on wrecked. Honestly, every time I brought out either Shelgon or Salamence, it annihilated almost every single important character in the game. It was so strong, and I loved using it since. It's shiny's okay, I'll give it to you. Salamence is shiny's alright. Not the biggest fan of its Mega Evolutions design because it's basically got a croissant for wings, but I do love its power. I love Salamence so much, and I don't think my love for Salamence is ever gonna fade because it's so strong, I've used it so many times in playthroughs, and I've just grown an attachment to it. So, yeah, I don't think Salamence will ever, ever fade. And finally, my favourite Dragon-type Pokémon of all time is Garchomp. Now, I'm sure most of you saw this coming. I'm a Gen 4 guy, 
And my favorite dragon type Pokemon is from Gen 4. But, to be fair, quite a lot of my number one uns haven't been Gen 4 Pokemon, but I'm sure most of you saw this coming if you saw my top 10 favorite Pokemon of all time. The first time I ever saw Cynthia's Garchomp in the anime, I wanted to use one so badly in the game. But I didn't know where to find the Gibble. So I didn't get to use one until one of my several playthroughs of Pokemon Platinum, where I caught a Gabite and used it for the Sinnoh League. It did come in handy, but I wanted to use one from the start of the game, but I didn't know where to find one. But I did go onto YouTube and searched up how to find one in Pokemon Platinum, and then I got to use one throughout the entirety of the game. And it was a beast. Oh my god, I love using Garchomp. Like, it's become a sort of a lore for me, where I always have to use Garchomp in a playthrough. And it's kind of stuck to me to this day. Still though, Garchomp's amazing. And ever since that playthrough, I have always tried to use Garchomp in a playthrough. Like, I actually did use one in one of my X and Y playthroughs. In fact, I'm pretty sure I used it in my very first X and Y playthrough. But, anyways, I love Garchomp so much. I love its design, I love its power, I love how much I've used it in p past Pokemon playthroughs. I'm pretty sure I may use one in my uh, Brilliant Diamond Shine Pearl playthroughs. Not sure if it's going to be the first playthrough I do, because I don't know when the earliest you can encounter Gibble is. But still, I will find a way to use Garchomp in a playthrough, because I love Garchomp. And there it guys, hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below if you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it, what are some of your favourite dragon type Pokemon, if we have any dragon type Pokemon in common, and if you have any video suggestions for the future, be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Tomorrow I'm going to be going over one of my other favourite types, that being my top 10 favourite dark type Pokemon. I do really love using dark type Pokemon, so this is going to be a very interesting list, I won't lie. Did you enjoy the video as much as I did making it? If you did, be sure to give it a massive thumbs up, comment down below, share this video with a friend, and if you're new, subscribe to my channel, it's been Inferno today. Okay, that's all for me, so until the next time, this is Inferno, signing off. Bye!